Ladies and gentlemen, it is 9.03. It is Friday night. You know what that means. Uh, it's time for Dino 101. It is time for Dino 101. I've been drinking already. Uh, if this is your first time here, thank you for coming. Sincerely, we're glad you're here. If this is not your first time here, welcome back, you fucking weirdos. Tonight, I'm very excited to nerd out about dinosaurs, about museums, uh, and frankly, have lots of fun stories and conversations with one of my favorite science communicators of all time. Before we do that, we have a couple ground rules we need to set. We want to set the stage for a fun evening. And to do that, I can't do this alone. My co-hostess with the mostest, my rav to my Oli, I guess, a woman who's been coming out of her cave and doing just fine. Ladies and gentlemen, Christina Gustavich. What's up? Uh, Pop-Tart is a ravioli. So let's get into it. <laughs> <laughs> welcome or welcome back to Dino 101. We're gonna have a great time. If it's your first time, we're gonna take care of you. Uh, if it's your hundredth time, hell yeah, you weirdo. Um, so this is for grown-ups tonight. Everybody loves dinos, but tonight is for the grown-ups. Uh, and all of this will be just as participatory as you want it to be. We'll go along, uh, learn about field work and behind the scenes at the museum and talking to people about science. And along the way, we'll have some games and polls. Get into it if you want to. Uh, we are recording tonight. You did start all right, Justin. Uh, so if you want your face to not be part of that, you can click stop video down there. Another thing uh, in this area that we love is the chat. I'll be checking the chat as we go for your questions. So if you hear something that you're stoked about or want to know more about, send me a message there. Cool. Uh, so uh, it's time for the drinking rules. Time for the drinking rules. I hope you have a beverage handy because here is when you will take a sip. Uh, if you hear anything about birds, because birds are dinosaurs, you'll take a sip. If you hear any of us make a dad joke, a groany punny thing, such as, of course I love geology, <laughs> you'll take a sip. It also counts if somebody says it in the chat. And for tonight, uh, it is another special visual clue. If you see, if you see a scene that takes place in a museum, if you see scene that takes place in a museum. Cheers, friends. Let's do yeah, it. That's a good reminder to pace yourself, seeing as how <laughs> we're going to be talking a lot about museums tonight. All of these rules the and games are totally clue. voluntary. Yeah. Um, you guys, as any class, we got to take attendance to get this ball rolling. So I'm curious to know how many times have you guys been to Dino 101? Are you but a newborn dino hatchling two to five times, six to 10 times, or more times than sauropods have vertebrae? How many times have you been to Dino 101? We Emily, how many times have you been to Dino 101? <laughs> this is my first time and I'm, I'm very excited. I'm not normally active at this time of day or week, like okay. Friday nights. I am on grandma time here. So <laughs> I'm like, I'm pumped. This is new for me. Okay, good. We're glad you're here. It looks like about a third of people are brand new. We have a third oldies, 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 a third newbies. I'm excited yeah. about that. We share yeah. this call. Yeah, all right. Nice. More time. Right. Sort of Very long. Oh, and we have a bimodal distribution again. We have a bunch of newbies and a bunch of whatever word you just used. So it's a curve. Yeah. we're going like to take good care of you, a little baby hatchling. Little <laughs> All right. Me. Uh, if this is That's not me. Your, yeah. <laughs> and, and Emily, and Emily, if this is not your first time here, uh, you probably don't know that we have a dino of the day every single time. So every single dino 101, we have a dino of the day. We task you, should you choose to render this digitally, ink and paper, watercolor, whatever you want, at the end of our time together in about 50 minutes, we'll go around the Zoom room and everyone will hold up their iteration of their dino of the day. Today's dino of the day, because we are celebrating museums, we are going to celebrate a dinosaur that is quite possibly the largest animal that's ever walked on the face of the earth, but also has a model in both the major museums, myself, Christina, and Emily have all worked in. That is right. It is your favorite, my friend, the Patagotitan, also known as the Titanosaur, quite possibly again, the largest animal that has ever lived. It lives in the Field Museum as well. It lives- yes. That's, yeah. It Imagine lives them. also- Obviously, at Am and H, Christina, you are intimately familiar with this particular uh, replica of the Titanosaur. <laughs> so we are also, I should mention, here's our Titanosaur one more time for reference. I should mention we're talking a lot today about field work and field trips. 
So your prop for Titanus, I'm sorry, for the Patago Titan is to render it utilizing some form of uh, transportation. A Patago Titan utilizing some mode of transportation. That can interpret that however you want. At the end, uh, Emily, get ready for what will surely be one of the greatest galleries of paleo art you have ever seen. Now, I, I've already, I'm stoked. I'm, I'm stoked you're here, Emily. I, you, we've already pseudo introduced you. You're the creator of the Brain Scoop. Uh, you are the creator of PBS's Prehistoric Roadshow. You are also someone who I know I has more than one cat and I'm like, I'm in a weird cat <laughs> phase right now. Anyway, Emily Grassley, welcome to Dino 101. Hi, thanks, thanks for having me. Oh, we got real air horn this time. That oh. is very exciting. That's for you. Um, yeah, what happened to our air horn, Christina? That's, oh, that's what? glaring. I heard it. <laughs> yeah, I did it twice. You? Where are you right now? Where are you zooming in from, Emily? Wait, like in my house? From where? <laughs> or from where like is in, my house yes. located? You can be as specific uh, as you want. <laughs> Some of us might yeah, what are, up what there, are your though. GPS coordinates? Yeah, Ooh, yikes. Um, no, I'm, I'm in the Chicago area. I'm south of the city a bit. But yeah, Illinois, here we, here we at. Yay. Nice. All right, I'm also in the Midwest. I'm in Ohio right now. Emily, to get the ball rolling, we have to play everyone's favorite game, dino or not a dino. Here's how this is going to work. I am going to read you a list of 10 different animals, some of which are real actual dinosaurs, some of which myself, with actually my mom's help this week, it was very cute, uh, are totally made up. Some of these are real, some of these are totally made up. Your job is to discern the real dinosaurs from the fake dinosaurs. If you need a spelling, I'm happy to spell any of these. And to make this especially challenging, there's also a theme for the not dinos. And if you can figure that out along the way, you're a goddess. Don't worry, you oh, have God. the help of literally everyone in the room. So look in the chat, look in the picture boxes. Sometimes the audience, Christina, what percentage of the time would you say the audience is actually helpful in this game? Uh, well, it's a, it's a dino or not a dino. So they are as good as as the odds, 50%. 50, they're a coin flip. It's not bad. Flip. Yeah. All right, I let people in the, uh, please drop in the chat how helpful you think you There's are going to be chance. in this game. That's hilarious. All right, here we go. Animal number one, dino or not a dino, Emily, Gondwana Titan. That sounds real. Gond I, I appreciate the uh, authority and the confidence in your answer. Gondwana Titan is a dinosaur. That's yes. a great start. You didn't even yeah. need anyone's help. Didn't even need help. All right, one for one, number two. Procasatops. Procasatops. Oh, Procasatops. So are these species at the species level or genera? This is the genus. This is technically okay. the genus. Yes. Okay. Can I get a repeat on that one? Procasatops. Procasatops. I have no, I don't think so. That is correct. Your two for two Procasatops is not a dinosaur. Number three, Kusamadon. Kusamadon. What the heck? I'm like, are these, they could also be like warrior names. Like this sounds like a, a samurai or something. I don't know, but I'm going to say a no on that one. Listen, whatever reasoning you're using, it's working. You're a three for three. Very hey. good. Very good. Animal number four, Panamerican Saurus. Oh, whoa. That's a weird one. Cause it's Pan like, you just take a Oh, we're getting a lot of, so that's an airplane. <laughs> well, you know, uh, I believe it was an airplane. I, I don't know. I'm going to go with no on that one. That is your first incorrect. That is a dinosaur oh. and American sort. I know, I know. Dang it. Listen, they're getting trickier. Next, Pellegrinosaurus. No, absolutely not. Hard pass. 5,000% no. No, absolutely yes. What? Yes. No, you're Pellegrini, kidding. Yes. Pellegrini Who made this? Is a listen, if you find it, you get to name it. Pellegrini Saurus. <laughs> you're now three and two. Next. It's like, it's like it's the big bottle water company, Pellegrino. Are they, they behind just, this? They sponsor a lot of digs in Central and South America. Okay, but next. Uh Rothcopterus. Rothcopterus. No. no way. No, that is not a dinosaur. You were correct. You're now four <laughs> and two. Next. Noto Colossus. Noto Colossus. Oh, golly. Where did I even find these? Oh, there's a, some people being like, yeah, that sounds yeah. real. There's a I'll go with that. I'm phoning a friend for that. And John T. Allen said yes. And so this is on you, John T. Allen. I also like 
dweeb who put Verizon Wireless in Dominus Rex. Um, so you're, wait, you're, your answer is what for Nota Colossus? Yes. Yes. That's what that John said. Great. You're five. Yeah, good two. job, John. You're five and two, which means all you need is one more to pass. Six out of 10, very low bar here. Uh, next, Colocephaly. Colocephaly. Uh, how do you spell that? K great question. K A H L O. C E P H A L E, colocephaly. I'm going no. That's fake. That is also fake. You're now six and two yes. in the home stretch. Next, Chibutisaurus or <laughs> Chibutisaurus. I'm not Chibutisaurus. C H U B U T I Saurus. Chibutisaurus. Oh, okay. People are saying yes on this one. So I'm going to trust the crowd, but I feel like maybe they were trying to lead me astray. I, I don't know. How quickly do you think people are Googling these? Oh. I just assume the nerds showing up here are like that they've done their homework. Nerds it's, with integrity. Yeah, right. Okay. Nerds with integrity. That's my, <laughs> new, my new rap group. Um, what's your final answer for Chibutisaurus? I'm going to say no. I'm changing it. No, that's not real. Chibutisaurus is a dinosaur. I was no, just, it's not. Listen, what does I, it even look like? I, I, these are good <laughs> questions. We're going to get to them in one second. Okay. The game is almost over. You've gotten six right, three wrong to get 70. Last but not least, have you figured out the theme for the not dino, dinos, by the way? Oh my God, no, this is too much work. Okay, that's fine. I couldn't, this, I couldn't focus. This one will probably help. Last but not least, Michelangelophodontosaurus. <laughs> Oh, no, these are the Ninja Turtles. Are they? Or are they artists? They well, are I artists always them... pro Kassat, Ops, Kusamadon, Kalocephaly, uh, Rothkopterix, and Michelangelo Lafodontosaurus, which is very fun to say. Um, Yikes. Yes, but- I, I have failed. I have an art history background. How could I have missed this? There was a theme actually, Emily, I, listen, I learned all of these literally this afternoon. There's a theme for the actual dinosaurs too. These were all different types of titanosaurs in the same family as Patagotitan. Uh, Gondwana Titan is the only one from Brazil. The next four, these guys are all actual real dinosaurs, all from Argentina. It's a cute little group. Dang, that's awesome. Yeah, I like these. Not things. a Colossus. That's funny. I can't believe it. See, I know, man, sometimes you can learn everything. You need something new every day learn something new every day all right emily we are about to talk about field work pbs prehistoric road trip which is a field trip and the field museum so before we do any of that christina and i thought we should set the scene and just we're curious to know you guys in the chat right now which is your favorite field is it wrigley field sally field the dating field a text field quantum field theory or whichever one capture the flag is being played in please vote now emily you're a co-host so you can't vote but how would you vote Oh, golly. My favorite. I would say Wrigley Field, honestly. Oh, interesting. I did not see yeah. that. Coming. Why? Well, it's, moving to Chicago is the first time I ever lived in a city that had major league sports. We don't have sports in South Dakota. I guess we have rodeo, but like, come on. So I moved to Chicago and I was like, I could go to a real baseball game. And so Wrigley Field is my first baseball uh, place ever. I see. I can't even remember what it's called. It's a, it's a stadium outside. I don't baseball know. <laughs> I think that's a technical term. <laughs> yeah. The baseball place. And, uh, anyway, so then I learned that the Ivy that grows on the back is like the original Ivy. Yeah. And I was like, that's pretty neat. Yeah. So I, I went for the Ivy. I stayed for the baseball or vice versa. I don't know. They had hot dogs, whatever. I love fun. that because we don't talk about sports a lot at Dino 101. So any opportunity I'm here for. And apparently everyone wants to play capture the flag because that's what won. Which yeah, according fun. to the chat, we we have enough for several teams. We can have a whole tournament. Whole okay. tournament. All right, Emily, PBS prehistoric road trip was great. I want you to tell us what it was like trying to go and do research, like actually you're in the field actually doing research, but you're also actually trying to communicate the science behind it while also trying to put together a television program. Um, how? It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. No, so we, it's a prehistoric road trip. Yeah, we, we filmed, we went to like three dozen sites. I think we had 34 or 36 different localities that we were, um, so that was like museums, and field work. Um, so we were working with all these researchers. So it essentially took us like nine months to plan the nine week shoot. 
like it was, the, it, but then it ended up being sort of the trip of a lifetime because we were on the road um, and filming like six days out of the week. So it was a really well orchestrated, well coordinated effort. Yeah, so this is um, part of our production team. This was uh, when we were out in the Como Bluff area in Wyoming with the uh, Tate the taters as they call them the tate uh casper uh, community college uh tate museum so uh they took us out to this sauropod site and it was the first day of summer but you couldn't tell because it was so freaking cold so my poor crew is like they, they look so frozen but it was a lot of fun so that that site was really interesting because that's where uh oc marsh did a lot of his excavations at, like a hundred years ago I noticed there's another member of your crew in some of these pictures. I didn't, I'm just curious, did you pick this member up along the way or is this member brought? What is the production role here? Yeah, um, so this is Fred the cat. Uh, I met Fred when we rolled into Harrison, Nebraska uh, one evening and we parked the car and Fred just came straight up and I was like, we have a friend now. And uh, yeah, when we were trying to leave the next day, Fred just entered our production van. And uh, so yeah, he, his ear tips are missing because he survived a blizzard and the lady who ran the Airbnb we were staying at adopted him, so. Fred is an objectively good name for a cat as well. Yeah, really it's perfect. It. So you sent me a bunch of pictures from, well, how long did we, were you away, like on the road doing this? We were on the road for, it was nine weeks, like total, I don't know, it was spread out over about three different months. So it was like two weeks filming, one week back sort of thing, but it was a lot. It, it seemed you sent me a lot of very cool pictures so I picked a few so I'm going to bring them up and if you can tell us like where you are what's going on because these are the ones that that piqued my fancy so first obviously field work um is that David Evans who is this where are we what are we doing yes yeah that's Dave Evans so this is uh near Hell Creek State Park in Montana so this is like Cretaceous age Hell Creek formation stuff um, and we have Carrie Woodruff on the right there, Dave Evans in the middle talking to our uh, co-executive producer and director, Ali Gimble, um, and then Raven Forrest was our production assistant. So I just took this picture because we were in the middle of filming a scene and like, I love that Dave is just so intricately telling uh, Ali about the specimen and, uh, and what you're looking at is like a jacket that they had put over um, part of a triceratops skull that was f discovered by Danielle Dufault, who's there in the pink, uh, she stumbled across this occipital bone, which is like the uh, one of the bones at the back of the skull, and it was just sticking out of the ground. And she came across it, but it was the last day of field work for that season. And so they put a plaster jacket over it and came back the next year, which is when we were there. So the whole thing was super exciting because they were like, you can come on this dig with us and you can bring your, your film crew, but we have no idea what we're going to find. And then just, we ended up finding half of the face of a Triceratops, like on camera. It was so exciting. So you didn't write that in the script prior. No, like <laughs> how, you know, we just show up and hope something fun happens. And yeah, we got really lucky. And so wait, this is a different site, right? Yeah, that is a different site. That's the Wyoming site. So uh, the Como Bluff area, and I, I can't remember, it was some kind of sauropod, obviously. Like that's the limb bone that's in uh, the jacket. But uh, you have JP Cavagelli, who's the paleontologist who brought us out there. He's in the middle wearing a hat that is made, that looks like a corn husk. Just fun it's, fact. Yes, it's a good, that's a good hat. It's a good hat. Um, what is this? Because I love this building. I wanna go hang out there. Do they Airbnb this space? Uh, I don't think that they do. I think it's full of rats at the moment. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> probably not at this point. So this is the bone cabin, uh, which was uh, put on a, it was located on a highway in Wyoming. And this was built in the 1920s, I think it was. It might've been earlier than that, but it was made by the, the guy, the landowner there who was coming across all these Jurassic dinosaur bones. So that's what is the material that makes up the building. It's cemented chunks of Jurassic age sauropods used to make this fossil cabin. So the joke was um, that it's the oldest building in the world. <laughs> that's, Get that's, it? So, that's so dumb. I that's, love a, that. that's a nice groaning. That's, yeah, that's what we'll, yeah, we'll all drink to yeah. that. The, yeah. the also suggesting that Bone Cabin uh, must, first of all, have a view of the sex lake and 
uh, be something we should say. Oh, to. you know what, Emily, uh, we are contractually obligated. And by that, I mean, Christina, I made the decision that we have to bring up sex lakes at least once every Dino 101. So Christina, could you please inform our newbies what exactly a sex lake is? Yeah, of course. Uh, and I know that if you've heard it before, you'll delight in hearing it again. A sex lake was the idea of one paleontologist who said that sauropods must be so large that there's no way they could have reproduced on land. So they must have gone to a, a watery place so the buoyancy could hold them up. So they wouldn't crush each other's bones. So now at Dino 101, we just assume that if any type of dinos want to get it on, they take a field trip to the sex lake. You're kidding me. No, this is real. This is, this this is, is not, I, I want to read this paper. Yeah, yeah. It's right up there with the, for the anthro nerds in the audience, the aquatic ape hypo hypothesis. If anyone knows about that, it's, it's just as weird and not plausible, but it's great. It's fun. It's great fun to talk about. Emily, I have one more question. There's too many pictures. I didn't know what this was. So I wanted to ask you, well, first of all, this is just a beautiful, there are two things. First of all, do you remember what this is? Because this is one of the most beautiful fossils I've ever seen. And then I have a second picture of a fossil. I don't even know what it is. Yeah. So this is interesting. This is a, a Archaeopteryx fossil. So there's about five of them that are on display in museums. The most famous one is the one that's at the Museum for Natural Kunda in Berlin. But this is the only Archaeopteryx specimen on display in North America. And it's at the Thermopolis Wyoming Dinosaur Center. Yep. It's amazing. Like in Thermopolis, Wyoming. If you've never been to Thermopolis, why would you? You there's no fucking reason that you would have been there, frankly, unless you were going to see this thing. Um, unless you knew that it was there. So it's just like such an unlikely place to see what like a really phenomenal fossil collection. So this is obviously an animal. What what is this? Why does this have a glass case around it? Well, so this is not a dino exactly, but this is this was out in Harrison. So this is when we met Fred and he was like, you got you got to go to agate fossil beds. So what this is, this is about six feet tall and the plexiglass case surrounds it so that it doesn't erode out of the freaking hill. Um, but it's a spiral burrow of a land beaver that lived here in like 56 million years ago. So the land beaver chewed its way into the spiral and then got stuck down here and it flooded and fossilized and that you it's called the devil's corkscrew because when the white people showed up in that area they're like i don't know what this is it's probably satan it's the default mm -hmm. <laughs> I, that was that was good timing on the sip that was great um all right uh christina we should pause for a second are there any questions or comments you want to highlight before we go before to our, we go to our next very important very very important poll Oh boy, uh, we have some people who used to live or have family near Thermopolis. Very cool, some uh, personal connection to these locations. Some have met this corkscrew uh, and, are, and are retweeting the, uh, or so to speak, the, if white people didn't know what it is, the devil. Uh, yes, just uh, so far, a lot of excitement in the chat. Remember to send me questions that you have for us and our guests for All right, so we just talked about a road trip that was investigating stuff from many millions of years ago. But here at Dino 101, we have our eyes squarely on the future. So Christine and I are very curious to know, what are you most excited to see on your field trip to the future? Future. Is it flying cars, jetpacks, space hotels, or we literally just want healthcare? <laughs> you know, we've been to the past, and we've taken us on a prehistoric road trip. Incredible. We're looking at the future. It was like 100% people just were like, healthcare, please, dear God. <laughs> Why? It's starting to spread out now. Which no, I'm this is scary. Glad to see. <laughs> Watch space hotels take it. We're also <laughs> up in our homes. We want like, we want the ultimate vacation. I don't care. <laughs> it's like, I, I will just, can I go to a different grocery store, please? Something. I also... I also did forget that not all of our audience is in the United States. And we're like, we're set. Give me a jetpack. <laughs> That's the space hotels, people. Yeah. All 11 of them. <laughs> well, we it turns out that we do literally just, just want healthcare. We want to look out the window on our road trip and see, uh, you know, people not in debt and vaccinated. Well, that this took a turn. So. Yep. <laughs> oh. Hey, you oh. know what's really fun and always brings my spirits up? museums. Anyway, 
So Emily, both of I have spent a ton of time in museums. So a, ton, a thing that we've spent a ton of time around is taxidermy and dioramas. And one of my absolute favorite Brain Scoop episodes was how you uh, detailed the renovations of the hyena diorama at the Field Museum. You sent me some very cool pictures. Walk us through, first of all, how old, I'm gonna start with this one. How old is this picture? Uh, that's from, well, I don't know how old the picture is, but the specimens were collected in 1893. So oh. I would say sometime between 1893 and like, I don't know, the night, early 1900s, somewhere in there. Okay. So I'm, how did you get involved with this particular thing happening at the field? Um, it was kind of my initiative. So when I started at the Field Museum, I had this YouTube show and they're like, what do you want to do with this? And I'm like, I don't know. Could we do something cool with exhibits? And so I was talking with the director of exhibitions and he and I had been talking for like an hour about like, what are some things we could do together? And we didn't come up with much. And like, as I was leaving, I remember him being like, well, there is this one thing. And it was just like always a key to be like, oh, I might, you know, I was intrigued. And so he had mentioned this diorama that uh, the those hyenas were collected in taxidermy by Carl Akeley, who is like the taxidermist of, you know, early museums, early 1900s. He started at the field and then went to the AMNH and did a ton of the taxidermy there. Yeah, so they, they were in this case and uh, the case wasn't finished. They didn't really have a lot of detail in their background or environment. And also they had been moved out of the African mammal hall and into the reptile hall kind of because people were like, oh, these are a little, I think they're a little ugly. Like maybe people don't really like hyenas. So we had this like Carl Akeley diorama group. And then at the same time, the Hall of Asian Mammals at the Field Museum had 20 diorama spaces, but they had only ever finished 19. So the last one was like boarded up and it had like, a, you know, some kind of map or something covering it up. So you didn't really notice it. But he, he mentioned this to me. He was like, we have like, homeless hyenas and we have an empty diorama and when was it, like they it, it was over 50 years since they've made a full uh, scale habitat diorama and I was like well why don't we do it like that would be fun let's raise some money let's build this thing and then people who contribute to an Indiegogo campaign even if they can't visit in like until 50 years from now they'd still be able to go see a permanent thing that they contributed to in a museum like wouldn't that be neat Super cool. So we, that's what we did. That's the story. Oh, the story's not over. What is this? So this well, <laughs> is the renovation. Yeah. Yeah. So we, well, yeah, that was the beginning of the story. So we ran that Indiegogo campaign and raised the money. And then uh, we had to build this diorama. So Aaron Delahanty and the people, the folks in uh, fabrication shop and exhibitions built the model. That was the open case. Um, so like it was painted, you know, those were doors that they were, they mounted so that they could get into the space. Um, but yeah, they had to build it from the ground up. They had to paint the whole background and build all of the landforms and do conservation work on the hyenas. It was pretty, it was pretty undertaking. Yeah, and that's the, fi the final thing. There it is. It's the, the finished one. It's so exciting. I, I love all of the details in it because they, the artists went to like extreme lengths to get everything as accurate as possible, including the uh, constellations that are painted on the mural in the background. So they looked at the notes that from the day that Carl Akeley collected the hyenas on like August 6th, 1896. And then they took that date and went to some people at Adler Planetarium and they have the software that can create any star pattern in the sky from any point in time, like 10,000 years in the past or 10,000 years into the future. So the star pattern in the sky of the hyena diorama at the Field Museum is what the constellation pattern would have been on the morning of August 6, 1896. That is how detailed that is. That I love that because we didn't discuss this, but that is a perfect segue into the story I want to tell about my favorite diorama at the American Museum of Natural History. And it starts like you already mentioned with our very good friend, the, basically the father of taxidermy, Carl Akeley. Like you mentioned before, Carl Akeley, like they would have 
an animal that was stuffed with sawdust and cotton balls and you get like a stuffed animal version. Carl Aikley would collect the animal himself, build a frame out of metal, large bones and wood, cover the whole thing in clay, wrap the original fur back around it and then put it into an actual living natural environment as if it was a moment captured in time because that's what these were supposed to be. Every single one, like you just mentioned, Emily, is a specific place at a specific time. And so if you go to the American Museum of Natural History in New York City and you go into the Hall of North American Mammals and you go to the left down a dark corridor, you will find these wolves. And these wolves look very, very dark and spooky compared to all the other ones. And that is because this is supposed to be at midnight. And actually it's a uh, midnight on D-Day way back in the forties. And they know that specific day because they looked at the constellations painted above the Aurora Borealis that you can't really see in the background right here to date it to that specific day. So this is the Northern shores of a lake in Minnesota. And when we're, when people are there, I'm always like, get up close and look up because the shadows you see under the wolves aren't shadows from a light above because there's like one blue light above them that casts like moonlight. And if you like use your cell phone light, you can glow, make it blow up uh, much better. So those are not actual shadows from the light. Those are shadows that are actually made of a specific physical substance. Emily, do you know what this snow is actually made out of? I, I bet it's something weird and or dangerous. It's probably like arsenic or something. Ooh, close. Anyone in the chat, does anyone in the chat know what the snow is made out of? And those shadows, those are not real <laughs> shadows. They're made out of that same asbestos, lead. I think lead. I was going to say dandruff. It's just, <laughs> you know, hygiene was not good back then. Maddie says, that was gross. Chicken parm, <laughs> potato flakes, fiberglass, dandruff, your mom. Uh, we have we have all, all types of inquiries here. Ooh, fiberglass is close. So you guys, the snow in this diorama is crushed marble. So the shadows you see, like under the uh, under the wolf and the streaks behind those sticks, there's actually slightly darker shades of marble, crushed marble, meticulously laid down with like a powder sugar sifter to create the image of a shadow under these under these wolves. Wait, is, even the even the twigs, Dustin. Yeah. The twig itself on the right is like a fake twig, but the lines you see, the shadow of the twigs, yeah. behind, that's a line of darker shaded crushed marble laid down to make the shadow. No. Yes. Fact. What? Yeah. Whoa. I, I didn't know that. I know. Uh, and just, you know, for the five, since we already brought up sports earlier, for the, I'm sure, the, the plethora of Minnesota Timberwolf basketball fans we have in the audience tonight. These are literally Minnesota Timberwolves. And Christina, I believe we are still waiting to hear back about sponsorship from the basketball team for Dino 101. Did, did they get back to us yet? Uh, no, but I did send them a mock-up of uh, a sticker, a sticker for their jerseys so that we get advertised during every game. So okay. I we'll appreciate see. that. Um, we have some more things to talk about, but while we're on taxidermy, you guys, I just, we could, Emily, you've been, actually, let me ask you real quick. <laughs> Where did you, you went to a taxidermy competition? Oh my God, yes, the World, the World Taxidermy Championships. How, give me the 30 second like <laughs> elevator pitch. Yeah, so World Taxidermy Championships, it's a super uh, exciting moment every other year, usually somewhere in North America. Um, World-class taxidermists bring mounts that they've been working on for years and they enter them into all different kinds of categories. So you have like amateur categories and intermediate, and it's not just like bears and wolves. It's like they have a freshwater fish category and a cold-blooded fish and a warm-blooded fish category. And they have like fabrication and they even have like artistic approaches, like new interpretations of taxidermy. Um, so it's very exciting. And you get it you get to meet some real characters there awesome. I, I didn't yeah. know that they had uh, those different types of categories i'm into that i wanted to bring that up because i wanted to share a couple quick pictures uh this is what a lion taxidermy <laughs> before carl akeley looked like uh i don't know what i like more the devil in their eyes or the fact that there's a rabbit just like chilling out at a kill scene right like, what, he's what's like what's up guys hey <laughs> this is often what taxidermy looked like before carl akeley this is what it looked like after Carl Akeley. I mean, that literally looks like a photograph, but that doesn't mean there isn't some pretty bad lion taxidermy. So we're about to do a poll, ladies and gentlemen. Emily, you've been to a taxidermy show, so your vote is really going to matter. I'm going to show you three different, let's say, greatly taxidermy lions, and we're going to vote on which one is our favorite. So first and foremost, are you going to vote for lion A, 
who Ugh. has had a couple too many to drink, Lion B, who also has been drinking, but also may just kill you, or C, <laughs> Fred. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Oh, do I have to pick one of these? Um, oh. If you want to, I'm gonna open the poll and let people vote. If you don't yeah. feel like you want to uh, sway their vote, you can, I, I don't know how I'm gonna choose. Christina, wh what are you leaning here? Uh, I'm leaning B because it looks like it just heard some juicy gossip. It's making yeah. sure it's like looking across the room to lip read. Yeah. <laughs> Emily? I'm, I'm, I'm loving C. It's like, it's like it, it said something that it immediately regrets. And now it's like putting its foot in its mouth. It's like, hmm, shouldn't have made that joke about the Pope in front of a bunch of Catholics. Like, hmm, probably not a good idea. True story. I, I, did that on the radio and then had a pain. I was like anxious. I made a joke about the Pope maybe potentially smoking pot. And then I was up all night being like, oh my God, every Catholic in Chicago is gonna be mad at me because I made a joke about the Pope smoking weed. And then I bring it up the next day too. So They're it's a really good gonna... time when I've got a gin and tonic. Did you get a lifetime ban from Stan Makita's donuts? <laughs> <laughs> it's a Wayne's World reference. Anyway, um, <laughs> it looks like, wow. A and C. People want to party with the, the guy with the bottle of wine. That's fair. That's fair. Emily, we knew that if we tried to just look up examples of bad taxidermy, it would take hours to narrow it down to three or four. So we went with just lions. Was there a lion category at the, at the show you went to? Oh, man, there's big game. So okay. yeah, for sure. And there, there was like predator categories versus prey categories. Like there's a distinction because the behaviors are different. There's different criterion for judging them it's very intense oh i'm sure i'm sure okay it's the so, world taxidermy championships <laughs> i would love to go i'm uh, sure it's gorgeous uh wait christina yeah. i see you i see you chomping at the bit hi hey hey yeah it it took a minute to narrow down i think i sent dustin nine non-lion animals yeah. uh for the best of the worst bad taxidermy uh treat yourself or maybe not if you like sleeping just just uh, look up best bad taxidermy uh, and I might show off some of my favorites in the after party as well. Uh, it was funny because I real the moment I realized I couldn't use those is when I realized I didn't know what animal half of them were. Like it was very hard to tell what I was <laughs> Yeah, they're saved as things like bobcat question mark dot JPEG. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? So Emily, you talked about the hy hyena diorama, which is very special and near and dear to you. I talked about the wolf. Christina, you have a specific, it's not a diorama, but a specific area and thing that is very special to you at the American Museum of Natural History. Um, should I just share the images? So we get the yes, ball? please. Yeah, bring up the first image. Look at that uh, I, this is our dino of the day, the Patago Titan. I love this part of the museum. So this is up on the fourth floor, which is arranged like a cladogram of life from pre-dinos, through dinos, up through mammals. So you can literally use space for time, walk through the evolution of branches and branches of the tree of life. Uh, this room introduces you to that with this dinosaur that doesn't even fit inside the room, uh, the Patago Titan. So this guy was found, or this is a, a cast of the bones that were found on a ranch in Argentina. Patagonia, that's where it got its name. Uh, it was the classic dino find, just a femur sticking out of the ground on a ranch. Uh, so the Maori part of its name is named after the people who own the ranch in Argentina where it was found. So uh, notice in the picture on the right, I am in my cabin gown enjoying a mimosa uh, because this was from my graduation from the Richard Gilder Graduate School at the American Museum of Natural History. Uh, Yay! Woohoo! Yeah! Wait, wait, yeah! yeah woohoo! First of all, yeah. Also, we for, I don't know if anyone else has remembered to drink every time we saw an image of a museum, but we are literally looking at a museum graduation, which it's is at true. least two drinks. <laughs> it's true. We got to drink it and drink. Uh, so often during grad school, oh man, I know some people have gone through academia here. You need those moments that remind you why the fuck you even started <laughs> and for me it was dinos i was that dino kid from day one i had every dino book and show and figurine and so when i wanted to cry this is the room i visited to remind myself of 
why the heck we're doing this. So I wanna point out to you what this red arrow is pointing to the most important part of this exhibit. That is the bench where I would sit by myself while the museum was open and people were looking at the gigantic animal in front of me and not my mucusy sobbing mess. We, our stories have taken like sad turns today. I don't know. I don't know. I, for me, I think it's sad if you like let it be sad. But for me, like this is, I feel like a million bucks. I did it. I got that mimosa yeah. and that diploma. Hell yes. Thanks That's a answer. victory. <laughs> yeah, we. I mean, there, there was the um, the botany hall, the world of plants at the Field Museum was always dark and quiet and chill, and that's where you would find me a sobbing, heaving mess on Tuesday afternoons, every other day of the week, like or of the month. <laughs> no, yeah. we all there's museums are places to feel things, guys. Hundred percent. Exactly. Hundred percent. Exactly. That, I mean, literally, that's the best synopsis of why I go to museums. I go to museums, art, natural history, otherwise to feel something, 100%. It's, yeah, it's a place where, like, I remember my why. Why, why do we like this stuff? Why did we care to learn about it? Why do we care to share it with other people? The answer is at the museum. Yeah. Aw. Care for it. We have a few, we have some museum behind the scenes show and tell to do, but first, Emily, it is time to play everyone's second favorite game. In order to do that, I'm going to bring to the fore our resident graphic designer in chief. Hello, Em. I know you're in Cincinnati. Can you share what you were drinking with the squad? Hello. I have my beautiful red wine, or not red wine, rose <laughs> okay. in this fun cup. Excellent. What so, is that? What? Oh, is it just a design? Just like a squiggly. It's beautiful. Pangea. Thanks. Pangea. <laughs> so emily here's how this is going to work i have private message dm'd m not emily m three different clues one for each round of the whiteboard challenge oh i should probably tell you the full name of the game uh because it is pretty long this is the m draws in front of everyone while the guesspert that's you emily attempts to figure out what guesspert related topic word or phrase m is attempting to digitally render a whiteboard challenge there are three rounds each one is progressively Weirder? You know, should we go with weirder, Em? Is that, does that work? Yeah. People in the chat will help you out. Emily, as she draws, feel free to articulate your thoughts. Uh, three different rounds, each harder, maybe weirder than the last. Em, take it away whenever you're ready. Oh, I'm ready. Oh, I'm not. I don't even know. Oh, that's a 45 degree angle. That's a spoon. You may get help in the chat as well. Oh, geez. I don't know. Is that a oh, uh, oh. bubble gum? Uh, I don't know. This is a, this is tough. Is that, um, so we said a COVID test. It's a brain scoop. Is it a brain scoop? The brain. So brain is part of the clue. So there's brain. Very, okay. It's, it's very related to brain scoop. I'll say that much. Bra <laughs> brain scoop. Brain. I'm so distracted by this chat. I got to close that. I'm sorry, people. Um, Looks like a speech bubble, maybe there. Yeah, brain. It, oh. I have no idea. Oh, in the chat. Some people in the chat have got it. Is it? Ah. It still has brains on it. There it is. There it is. It still has. There brains. we go. Nice. There we go. That's my catchphrase, and I couldn't figure it out. <laughs> that <laughs> that was a very weird-looking brain, M. But either way. That would, I, that's not, that's a, that's not on M. That's on me. <laughs> Are you judging my craft, Dustin? I went to art school for this. It's true. This is, this is For true. this moment. There's two more rounds. Uh, take it away. Round two. The points are, let's say, doubled. Uh, oh, I don't know. Is Man, I went to art school. It's a butterfly. Okay. Is this, is this Wahydra? Is this the Wahydra butterfly? Can you say the full name, please? <laughs> it's okay. It's Wahydra Grassley Eye. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it has can, a smiley face. Can you tell the squad uh, we, what? Why this butterfly? What's the name of this butterfly mean? Um. So I. This is like the greatest honor of my life. Um. But there uh, is a gentleman, Dr. Andy Warren, at the University of Florida. He studies butterflies, and he found a new species, a butterfly, and he named it after me. 
I, my name is mortalized in the scientific literature and it's associated with the tiny brown butterfly that had its gonads uh, removed for study. So that's, you know, just a little tidbit for you about how they determined it was a new species. They have to look at its nuts. So, so it was like, I was like, oh, this is really charming. I was like, oh, why doesn't it have a lower half of its body? I'm like, oh, we had to remove its reproductive parts. I'm like, this is charming. I love it. Science, a beautiful I like process. You didn't have to tell us that that it had gonads removed, but you did, and I appreciate you for it. Uh, extra bonus point for that. M, take us around three. I don't really have a filter, so yeah, you're just here. You just get my uninterrupted train of thought. What is? I don't know. Is this Yoda? <laughs> I don't understand. It's a Pokemon. It's Wait, also, are you wearing a Stegosaurus blazer? Yeah, I am. Okay, did I you just notice? It. Yeah, it's great. Got my matching earrings. I know today the dino of the day was sauropod, but the Stegosaurus has my heart too. This is like a demonic Pikachu. It does look like a demonic Pikachu. Right. That's not what we're looking for, but that's good association. Yikes. I don't know. So we said vampire butt, hyena. It kind of looks like Shrek. We're going somewhere weird. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what, <laughs> yeah. what she's drawing now at this point. Um, don't know. Oh, I, I blink 182. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're going. Em. I, I'm seeing the interpretation of this word. Somebody said Miss Frizzle in the Mothman, and I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Tell it to me. I, the thing is, I have I know what it is, and I have no idea what M is drawing right now. I looked I, this one up. <laughs> I have oh. no clue. Um, it is from, it's from a movie. I'll, I'll say that much. It's from a movie, it, which I think is the direction M's going right now. People are getting it in the chat. Yeah. And, and there is Ghostbusters. A, okay. Uh -huh. But what specifically, there's a specific character in Ghostbusters that I'm referencing. You guys, I've never seen Ghostbusters. Oh, you've never seen okay. Ghostbusters? I've never seen okay. Ghostbusters. Okay. It's, so, scary. I, the, it's too scary for me. That's fair. I don't like scary movies either. Em, can you tell her who this is and what character it plays in Ghostbusters? No, Dana, only Zool. <laughs> so there's this demonic character or ghost, I guess, called Zool. And Emily, I wanted to include Zool because when we talked this week, you said Zool was your favorite dinosaur, which is an ankylosaur. Yes. We just had an ankylosaurus dino of the day. So in my mind, this was a connection with that Zool. I know. Well, you see, I know the dinosaur because I'm a nerd, but I don't, I'm not that kind of nerd. I'm not a, I'm not a movie nerd. I didn't know. It's, it's really, listen, this was me really, really stretching to try to talk about Zool. Why is Zool the ankylosaur, <laughs> not the character from Ghostbusters? Why is Zool the ankylosaur one of your favorite dinosaurs? I mean, it's just, it's just mind blowing. I mean, you just, it's like a religious experience looking at that thing. I've never even seen it in person, but just like the photographs, it's stunning. It's mind blowing to me. Like you can have a fossil, like a specimen that is that well preserved. It's just like the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Comple it blows my mind to just think about it. I don't know. It's amazing. Have you seen it? Just look at it. I don't know. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, and by the way, thank you for drawing per usual. Your services are much appreciated. Uh, oh, there we go. Finally, you, um... air horn. <laughs> All right, listen, we only have about 10 minutes left. So what we need to do is a very rapid fire, 30 second for each of us, me, Christina and Emily, uh, a behind the scenes show and tell. And then we have a little bit of Q and A as well as we have to see our titanosaurs um, utilizing some mode of transportation. So Christina, I know you wanted to go first. This was the one object you wanted to show us from behind the scenes at the Museum of Natural History. Yes. Uh, yes, so something that I noticed came up in Emily's prehistoric road trip is this idea that like not every fossil is like some big femur sticking out of the ground from a dinosaur. There are tons of other fossils to discover. Uh, this is one of my favorites from the collections at the American Museum of Natural History. You're looking at some cephalopods here. So if you're a squid fan from last week, these are their shells. Uh, yeah, here's my pencil for scale. So 
the collections on the fifth floor of the American Museum of Natural History are organized the way that I organize my own home. When you open a drawer, there's general organization, but once you're in that drawer, it's like, here are some shelves. Uh, it's the beauty of what is shown to the public is not necessarily reflected in the stuff that is behind the scenes. So my job over one summer was to go through these drawers and drawers and drawers and sort out what time period these were from, what they were, how big they were, etc. cetera. Uh, and this is one of my favorites as well. Notice that whoever found this called it Cerdoceras, comma, probably. Probably. You no, know, especially with marine fossils, uh, you find a ton of stuff that was, uh, that died and was preserved in the same place. So you might have a Cerdoceras in there. You might have some other stuff. I love the probably. I love the question probably? mark. I mean, they're honest. They're like, you know what? It's been a long day. I don't have all the answers. Someone else 100 years from now can figure this out. Good you luck. See in, you see that in lots of different, there's a sarcophagus at the Met that says probably found in Rome. Probably. <laughs> Probably, Probably. But I'm not, we're not here to talk about art museums, we're talking about a pair of things in the behind the scenes and the collections of natural history museums. And you'd think I would do AM and H, but I'm gonna throw you a curveball. This is actually at the Royal Terrell Museum of Paleontology, Canada's Dinosaur Museum. They have oh. more dinosaurs, yeah, right? Um, this is where I learned that Tyrannosaurs, all members of the Tyrannosaur family, have serrated edges on two different sides of their teeth, like double-sided steak knives. And that is why I affectionately refer to these guys now as murder bananas. They are not messing around. I just love to think of the extremes evolution goes to when it comes to just designing the nature's perfect killing machine. That's amazing. All right, uh, Emily, guess what? I made a quick poll because you have three different things. You, throw, you sent me pictures for two and then showed me earlier an actual physical thing. So ladies and gentlemen, for our final poll tonight, what do you want Emily to show and tell us about? Space, ocean, or dinosaurs? Vote now, this will determine your 60 second spiel, Emily, on the last thing we talk about. Here at oh. Dino 101, the audience really, it's hard to tell what they like. Yeah, it you is. Know, we try every week to please yeah. them and it's like space. I mean, this is getting closer. This yeah, is getting, <laughs> this is narrowing. The margins are, oh, I'm getting anxious. Whoa, jeez. It's very close. Where will it land? Well, yeah, dinosaurs, I'm surprised. I'm surprised how close space is a contender for dinosaurs because ten dinosaurs in space don't really get along. Mortal enemies, mortal enemies. Yeah, yeah. you know. We have 93% voter turnout. Space got 29%, Ocean got 32%, but with 39% of the vote, Emily, you're going to show and tell us about dinosaurs. I know yeah, you Yeah, I do. I, brought, I have show and tell, like actual show and tell. That's why we call it that. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we call it show and tell. I have a dinosaur bone. This is a freaking dinosaur bone. This is um, from my my grandfather's ranch. My grandpa found this. Sorry, my camera's being weird. Um, and he was a farmer and a rancher near Faith, South Dakota, which is Hell Creek Formation. Um, it's also where Sue the T-Rex was found. And my, yeah, Sue was found like five miles off of my family's ranch land. So I would always joke that we were neighbors. We're, Aww. you know, we're related. And so he would find all this stuff. He didn't, he knew it was prehistoric. He didn't know what it was, um, but I had ended up inheriting all of it. So uh, this is part of a limb bone. This is like probably top of an arm or a leg and you can see the inside and it's crystal mineralized. Isn't that neat? It's like 66 million years old. It has a flat spot where it's smooth. It's just how cool. Very exciting. I have another one too, but. Can you lick it just to make sure, just to certify that it's actually a fossil? Should I? I mean, it's, you can see okay. the dinosaur. I can lick it too. It's just, it's been in, in my covered porch and raccoons live there sometimes. It seems like that is the penultimate way to determine whether or not it's a fossil or a rock or a replica. I, yeah, I, I, I would, but I'm afraid I would get some weird disease. There's no, there's no required licking at Dino 101. <laughs> I'll do it if you need me to, Dustin. Yeah, that was my show and tell. Christina, what were you saying? No, all these people in the chat, lick it. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's just a whole lot of lick it in the chat. Yeah, sounds like the answer is no. Sorry, everybody. 
Um, all right. So per usual, we're going to go probably about almost 10 minutes over. Let's like take these last few minutes, Christina, to answer any final lingering questions before we look at this gallery. Christina, what, what do we have from the chat? I'm excited to hear. Yeah, I like to see this. Time is a lie. We're, we're done when it's over. Uh, Emily, how did you decide what to include in your prehistoric road trip? Oh my God, that was, that's a really good question. Um, we wanted to show a huge amount of geologic time to try and help people understand that you don't have to go to a huge area to experience different moments in time. So uh, we wanted to fit as many different points of time stops as we could. And then we ended up with too many stops. So when you watch prehistoric road trip, we start like 2 billion years in the past and then drive closer and closer to present day. Um, so we wanted to just find stops along the way. So that's how we ended up picking things. It was also, it blew my mind that there were so many different areas we could have gone and filmed. It was like the show could have been six times as long as it was, and we wouldn't have run out of material. It was mind blowing to me. That was one of the first things I noticed when I was watching was the immediate acknowledgement of like space for time. We're going to drive through time. And uh, as a geologist, it just makes my heart smile to get other people bought into that idea. Yes. Physically move through time, y'all. Uh, so to bring it back to a museum, uh, I had a couple of questions about how does the inside of a diorama get cleaned? Oh gosh, it often doesn't. Um, so like the traditional dioramas you see at like the AMNH and the Field Museum, uh, they were created in the early 1900s. And so uh, they were created and they were essentially sealed up to prevent dust and pests and other things getting in there. Um, and so they, most of them don't have access points. And the other thing that's interesting is that because of the uh, glass that was used in the front of the dioramas, technically it doesn't pass like OSHA safety standards anymore. So if you remove that glass to clean the diorama, you can't put it back. You have to put new glass. And that those panes of glass are super expensive. So if you're gonna like wanna replace all of them, it's gonna be like some huge financial commitment from the museum. So they don't clean them very often because then they have to replace the covers. So that's a little tidbit for you. I've also learned that some of the older taxidermy was preserved using formaldehyde. So some of the ones that were sealed, they really, really don't want to unseal. Um, yeah. Some of the more and arsenic. Yeah. They yeah, use a lot of arsenic yeah. and insecticides. So like they're, it's dangerous. Don't go in there. Oh. But some of the more recent ones, like the the big grizzly, it's a grizzly bear, AM and H, right? They'll go in and give it a whole bath and touch up its hair and, and brush it. It's very sweet. Uh, yeah. Some of the more recent ones we can get in there. Uh, I had a question from someone who's clearly a big fan. Did Soon Raccoon make it home safely? Oh my gosh. Soon Raccoon is uh, about to be in transit. So uh, when I left I started my program brain scoop at the uh, museum in Montana and I kind of abducted a, a taxidermy raccoon when I left, uh, made it the mascot of my show uh, and dragged it around and put it in the back of all sorts of videos. So anyway, I have to give it back to Montana and that's the big conundrum is like, how do you get a taxidermy raccoon back across the country during a pandemic? And so yeah, I was like, do I have to do I have to put him in the shotgun to my car and take a rotor all the way back? So that's a that's an outstanding question. I'll get back to you on that one. TBD. And uh, tonight has been sort of a love letter to museums. I know I did my why museums, Emily. Why museums? Oh, I mean, museums are amazing places. Like you can't, we can't go back in time. Unfortunately, the technology does not yet exist for us to get into a time machine and go back to any point in time. And museums are it. Like museums house and hold the relics of the past. They hold information that can unlock understanding about like where we come from, and where we're going. I mean, how can you get more existential than that? It's like they're I don't know. They they hold the keys to so much, unlocking so much information. And I think um, the more like in, in addition to like holding things from the past, people are still looking at that stuff and contributing new things. So it's like just a perpetuation of knowledge and growth of the mind. I could go all night. You probably should cut me off. <laughs> nope, because we feel the same way. Yeah. Museums are our best attempt to understand ourselves and the world around us. 
uh, and they make us feel stuff. Yo, I'm excited to feel things when I see these pieces of art. You guys ready for the best paleo art gallery maybe ever? Maybe ever. Yes. All right. So yes. here's how this is going to work. Ladies and gentlemen, if you have uh, rendered your Titanosaur, your Patago Titan, utilizing some mode of transportation, please hold it up now. I'm going to spend like 10 seconds to highlight each of these pictures. Emily, Christina, feel free to chime in. Uh, if you went, uh, Emily, I know that you do a lot of painting on the side, so you are an expert in this type of thing. Your oh my gosh. Will be very oh. Here we go. We'll start with our resident paleo. Oh, wait, no, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, hold on one sec. We should start with our resident paleo artist, though, M herself, who's used a background here. Okay. Uh, this is good. Were they blue? We don't know. We don't know. This is that's an amazing. Ellen original. On a horse? Okay. Yeah, onward on a horsey. That's the mode of transportation. Uh, they are going west. <laughs> I love it. That's a that's a great one. Oh, look, yeah, mode of transport. It's it's moving and grooving. It's just, it's just walking. His own mode well, of transportation. Yeah, he's he's trusting his instincts. There we go. Okay. Oh. Damn, amazing. Yes. Yes. It's how where did they get? I love the that the detail of the knee pads. Of yeah. course, you would need a knee pad. You need a pad on every knee. Yep. Yep. That is, that is very good. I like these a lot. Uh, reminder, please upload these to Instagram and Twitter. Tag myself, Christina, Emily, Atlas Obscura. These are just great. Oh, wow. okay. Here we go. <laughs> Yikes. All right. Wow. The, the pilot's helmet hat thing, I love that. Wow. Oh, yeah, and the little goggles because you're going fast. You're going to get dry sauropod eyeballs. Wait, but where is it going? Where is the airplane taking it? That where is the journey? Where will it end up? I don't. I love those questions. That it really speaks to my heart. The journey is more important than the destination. Um, we're going yeah. to our Mountain Dew specialist, Michael Bahara. <laughs> oh, and a sex lake on a yacht. Okay, with a yacht hat. Nice. I love the yep. sex lake font. It's like enticing and spooky. Yeah. I like that Michael acknowledges he's he puts his age on there too. Like he's gonna he's like I'm putting this on my refrigerator. Listen, we have some. Art I'm proud. Artists in the group here. Okay, here we go. To the field. I like yes. that. Yes. We can't tell if it's the proverbial field where field work takes place. Maybe it's the field museum, or both. Yeah, Wrigley Field. They're like, I need a hot dog. Here we go. Yeah, the baseball space. Do you guys remember those like old mock-ups of like the first attempts at flight, like dig dirigibles and weird planes and helicopter situations? Mm -hmm. Remember those? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I love that. Oh. <gasps> I love the strength of those four birds yeah, right? holding, you know, that's impressive. This is this has birds, everybody. In case you still need to have a sip, now's a great time to do that. I like the I like the bowler hat and the look it's got. It's like very '30s gangster to me. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, get out of my way! All right, Rebecca, hold it. in here. Nice. Oh, people are sledding. <gasps> it's on a frozen on sex thing. lake. Oh, frozen sex lake. Not happy to help you all down the mountain. Oh my gosh. This, that's cute. I think this is what Stevie Nicks had in mind when she wrote Landslide. <laughs> that's a snow covered hill, baby. <laughs> I'm in love. Oh, what is the price to get on the MTA nowadays? $275 a ride. Oh, wait, this isn't the MTA. This is, what is this BA? Is Bay Area Rapid Transit. Yeah. The BART. Wow. Good. Had a going to work on the BART Titan. <laughs> Just rolls off the tongue. That was nice. Let's oh. go to space. Yeah. But why though? I mean, you're just you're gonna run into your asteroid just fa even faster. Let's go the other way. Well, maybe it is. Maybe it's escaping to Mars. Dinosaurs on Mars. There we go. There we go. Nice. Oh yeah, there was Mars there. I get it. Sweet. Oh, it's on a pit. Wait, wait. What? Huh? Oh my God takes flight oh it's a mosquito mosquito in the blood in the taking DNA. the dna in the mosquito butt uh we have a legit artist 
I mean, everyone's a legit artist, but this is a published artist. Whoa, that's amazing. Really good. Ooh, it's, it's faces making that gritted teeth emoji. Yeah, airport walkway. Why me? Oh yeah, you get stuck behind the person who's not walking. I hate that. Man, I can't wait to be annoyed by that again. Seriously. I, someday. I like, I like that of all the different types of transportation, we have included a moving walkway. That's, I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, Titan, I like this. Word oh. Wordplay. Oh, oh, our heart will go on, Mary and Leland. That's really cute. Just, that's the level I'm usually operating in my drawings. I appreciate that. This is beautiful, too. Whoa. Oh, it's an, is this another seafaring guy now? It's, it's on some sort of boat, I believe. Yes. In oh, there it goes. Absolutely enormous canoe. <laughs> I'm also digging the theme of the shirt. That was great. On a skateboard. Okay. Okay. Here for That's that. a huge skateboard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love that. I love the idea of an entire herd of sauropods all on giant skateboards. Like where's the next Tony Hawk video game? Put a Patagonia Titan in there. Come on. You know, one time someone made cookie. Oh, wait. You know what? Someone is already, this episode as well, made cookies. The yeah! shape. Yeah. Oh, wow. You made that over the course of our one little hour? Is that That's just a, a cookie? Chunk? Is it like, is it a chunk of chocolate just melted in the middle? Okay. All right. Here oh for my it. gosh. The dedication. I didn't do anything the last hour except drink. Oh, I feel so lazy. <laughs> Yo, speaking of dedication, that is amazing. But also this is our, one of our first 3D <gasps> rendering. What? Whoa. Oh my gosh. I it's love the, it. What is the the and, oh the the license plate is N meet one for neck meet one. They are hitting the town. This is like a <laughs> wow. oh, <get> town. <laughs> this is the get in losers. We're going shopping of dinos. <laughs> that is I love that. Thank you, Cat. Cat is a zookeeper all the way in Melbourne, Australia, and she's wearing a Jurassic Park shirt. So obviously, much love over there. The daylight. Okay. Wow. I'm blown away. Tiny tricycle. <gasps> I don't think actually we're blown away. Blue T Rex? What? Bobo the pen. <laughs> go, go, Titan. Go, go, Titan. Uh, I, I appreciate the colors on this next one. Okay. I'm here for that. Oh, it's like Flintstones. Okay. <gasps> yes. It's Dino the Dino. It's like literally like taking the front seat. Running the show now. Get away, Fred. Dino's in charge. Our car now. Another skateboard. Here for that. Yeah. Like that. I love it. It's oh. part of the skateboard game. The I coloring have, on that is amazing. Right. I have to give a shout out to Kato, the neck meat you put on this dinosaur. Look at this mm -hmm. flappy neck. Mm -hmm. Oh, you didn't have to do that and you did. I love it. I believe that's technically known as dank neck meat. That is dank neck meat. Yep, yep. It's fair. Wow. Okay. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> it's a good effort. This is definitely A for effort. I love the simplicity. Minimalism is in a skateboard. We've established that is a phenomenal common denominator here. I my, one of my favorites, to be honest. Yeah. I mean, the top hat. That's all I need is a top hat. Oh, we haven't had a segue yes. yet. Jada came rocking the segue. I like it. Yes. yes, rival for king of segways. You all probably heard tonight. Dustin can make a transition from anything to anything else. <laughs> Here's a segue in corporeal form. You know, I once heard a story about the guy who the CEO of the segway company, the guy invented it and like made it apparently supposedly died because he wrote a segway off a cliff. But that's no. not true. It's actually not true. But it's one of the stories you want to be true. Anyway, speaking of segways, look at the color of this dino. Wow. Speaking of segues, wow, I didn't actually think there'd be a segue, but it was a segue to a segue. I'm a <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Why can't he get a longer tie? Well, another skateboard. I like the skateboard. We've gotten a lot of skateboarders here. Oh, wow. Look at the coloration here. We are, oh, roller skates. Hell yes. Wow. That's beautiful. Nice. I love this. I love the setting too. I feel Very like we have more people than, than average that have made drawings tonight. I'm here for it. 
What does that say? What does it say at the end? I'm not sure, but you ran into the same problem I always run into when I try to draw a dinosaur and it just goes off the side of the page. Yeah. Imagine I mean, it's all. The rest yeah. of the tale. Imagine the rest of the tale. Good. <laughs> we can do that. Can't. Oh, oh, you guys get ready for this next one. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> nice. This is somebody who knows who knows how to churn out a deliverable on a tight tight yep. turnaround. I appreciate yep. it. Yes. <laughs> Bold of, you, bold of you to call it an assignment <laughs> <laughs> mandatory uh pilot I loaded oh amazing i chris when we were talking about this uh prom all christina could talk about was having a tie a patago titan on a plane and here we are yeah i made a little sketch of uh trying to share a middle seat with a patago titan it's <laughs> sticking out the front <laughs> Oh. Yes. I just now it's like all the the ones who are wheeling and dealing in different ways. They're on the move, rolling literally. I I love this visual. Thank you. <laughs> I really want to see all of these Patago Titans together at the skate park. Yes. Yeah. I also like this this one is Donald ducking, uh which is a phrase I use when you're wearing a shirt and no pants. It looks beautiful. <laughs> it's good for a Friday night at home. <laughs> Chicago, we ride bikes. Oh, shucks. Thank you. Yay. I love this. I, one time somebody told me to ride a bike without looking at a reference photo and I thought I was drunk. I like had an aneurysm. Like, you can't do it. You need a reference. It's harder than you think. Very yeah. Thank straight. you. True. This is true. I love this. Oh, okay. Okay. On a bus. I like that. <gasps> yeah. Public transit. I'm here for it. It's like the room at AMNH where it has to stick out both ends. Nope. Yes. Scott, Scott sent a, a link to this one too. So I have it open my computer. I'm so happy that we can see it here. It's a, it's a wheelchair dyno. Oh, nice. It's incredible. Amazing. It's artistic. It's rolling about town. Oh, it's so good, Scott. Right. It's accessible here. Yes. Another wheel. Mm, a little bit harder to navigate. A little bit on little this bit. one yep. Yep. but it's giving it's doing the best it can penny farthing thank you donald i believe that type of bike is known as a velocipede which is just a great name someone look that up someone fact check me velocipede that's like a millipede i don't want to meet at all van eyes cruise night oh wow jojo fellow dodger fan jojo coming at us from van eyes that's where my parents are from yes oh this is a classic, classic vibe, cruising in Van Nuys. 1939 Ford pickup. What a level of detail here, Jojo. So, oh, okay. Wow. Oh, I'm loving the jammies. I'm oh, loving the jammies. That one will be at the, the uh, skate park as well. <laughs> it's coming for yeah. you. <laughs> I, I love that those are, those are double unicycles, right? Yeah, yeah. The, no. Yes. Oh, oh, nice. Yeah, uh, Titanosaur has been a, plant eater till now <laughs> oh i like the little stand this little it's little a little, little painting oh dino in space i love it it was like get me off this rock put me out there i'm too i, I need more than just a sex like i need sex space sex it's at the space hotel <laughs> there you go. i like how big yeah, oh. this oh, is this is cute good. Double Decker London bus, a classic. I'm surprised we didn't see more of those, but then again, America. Yay! Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> that one's on a, another bicycle, tiny bike. Why are the bikes not ever made to scale? <laughs> we need more bikes that are better fit for How these big, giants. You would need the largest bike in the history of the world to fit one of these guys. I also thought this was a, it was wearing a yarmulke at first, which I know it's not wearing, I assume it's maybe, I don't know. Is a helmet for safety? It could be a yarmulke. All right, I'm trying to find out, uh, where are you, Christine? I'm trying to bring you back. Shall I spotlight myself? Spotlight yourself, bring yourself back. All right, you guys, per usual, we went about 15 minutes over. That was great. So we have a couple last final orders of business. Uh, first of all, next week, I am very excited to welcome Another one of my absolute favorite YouTubers of all time, the shitty robot making Simone Yurtz is gonna be here, which I'm uber stoked about. She claims to not have a favorite dinosaur, 
So we are going to go through a BuzzFeed style March Madness bracket situation to figure out what her and your, if you don't have one, uh, your favorite dinosaur is. Emily, do you have any final questions before we bid everyone adieu tonight? Final questions, thoughts, feelings? I, this was such a whirlwind. I feel like it was the most delightful Dino 101 first time ever. This is awesome. Good. And you're a champion now that you've won Dino or not a Dino. We'll send you, it's like a WrestleMania belt situation. It's in the mail. Yes. Cannot wait. We'll wear it every day. <laughs> thank you, Emily. Christina, do you have any final words before we bounce? Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Emily. I am so stoked to nerd out about field work and museums and talking to people about dinos and science stuff. These are all my favorite, favorite things in the world. And just, uh, you know, if you can get your vaccine so you can hang out with us at the museum. And if you want to cry, that's cool too. Yeah, this would be so I'll much fun. <laughs> yeah, I'll hold your hair. I, you know, those things, fun <laughs> times. There. Hey, Christina, you want to, before I say bye, you want to tell people about the after party? I would love to tell you about the after party. Listen. So after this, we like to do an after party. And just like any party, you don't have to go to it. Mm -hmm. But if it sounds fun to you, you can. So uh, imagine we are all leaving this venue and going across the street to a bar to chat. And you, you know how it is on Zoom. I'll scream at the same time. Uh, it has nothing to do with Atlas Obscura. And it's just a fun time. Come hang out with us. And maybe I'll show you some of my favorite bad taxidermy. I love people in the chat being like, is it mandatory? Is it, a, is it through Atlas Obscura? Uh, once again, it is absolutely not connected to Atlas Obscura or mandatory whatsoever. If you've been to the after party before, it is the same link. If you want the link to the after party, which we will start in literally four minutes from now, slide into my DMs on Instagram or Twitter. I will send you that link. But for now, I do not care if you're asking questions, searching for dinosaurs, or scooping coal to fuel your Patago Titan train. Scooping coal? When are we? What year is this? Never stop digging. I love you guys. I love dinosaurs. We'll see you in the after party. We'll see you next week at Dino 101. Bye, everybody. Bye. We do